Welcome, 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 everyone. Yes, this is the Maverick Do It Different podcast, and I am Paul Fink, the Maverick Millionaire, and we are in for a treat. As we go into this podcast, understand you're in the right place at the right time because this is the place where we do it different, thinking different, being different, and bringing you different ideas, different mantras, different understanding on how to look at the world to create a better world for you, for me, for the whole universe, and to make it just a better place for all of us to live. So let's get moving. We've got someone special here with us. Someone who is the peaceful billionaire, and I want you to pay attention to those words. We're going to be talking about that and more. The world's most highly sought after life and wealth mastery mentor for CEOs, entrepreneurs, industry leaders, optimizing and leveraging the $27 billion asset you already own so that your next level wealth, peace, and fulfillment are absolutely inevitable. Jessa is a maverick of the mind and human potential pioneer who transformed a rewarding but exhausting 10-year career in, get this guys, neurosurgery into a purposeful, driven mission to revolutionize health creation and financial independence. From brain surgery to mind surgery, her extensive expertise takes uh, us on a journey, if you will, from financial destiny of stress and and to fun. So from a stressful journey to a fun journey, making it simple so that you can create financial well-being and abundance in your world. Jessa is unwavering as a constant cheerleader and advocate for feeling exceptional while creating a life and legacy beyond your wildest dreams. Please welcome Jessa Carter to the podcast. Jessa, uh, such a pleasure to have you here. You're always a, a breath of fresh air and energetic. How's everything going with you? So glad you're here with us. Fabulous, fabulous. Thank you for having me. We want to get right into the game. So everyone's taking really good notes. And we're going to be talking about some of your background and how you got here. Only first and foremost, you know, we talk about the influence here and, and what really got us to where we are. Um, mentors, books, things that have really influenced your world and your life. Uh, what would you say? Uh, definitely both. I think I think the the starting place is often books and then the books become a staple. But mentors is the that's the game changer that's the thing that that changes everything and I'll, I'll never forget the the first one of my mentors the first time that I met him I just there was just it was palpable that this man saw something in me that I didn't yet see in myself and so I'm just you know shout out to Bill Walsh um and 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 so to have known him for so many years now and to now be the person that he saw so many years ago and to now have that same incredible uh, and uncanny ability to see just pure potential in others um you know sometimes i kind of have to pinch myself that that that's what happened <laughs> yes yeah it's really amazing and what mentors can do. And you're right. I went through that same journey books first. Then I went into just seeing these people and experiencing them live and then having them build me up and, and step in that space. And it's exactly what your journey has been, uh, has mirrored that as well. Uh, so absolutely. We encourage everyone to reach out to mentors, any particular books to get some people started that maybe they're just getting going. Uh, what books would you recommend? Um, so my, my top three favorites, I mean, everyone, everyone always says think and grow rich, right? Think and grow rich is kind of, you know, that foundational Bible. Each time you read right. it, you take something new away from it. Um, that was, that was an early book for me. The other ones, uh, one of my favorite starting places is the book infinite possibilities by Mike Dooley just really kind of just opening your mind to how much more is possible than what you might currently see or believe or perceive to be possible. 
Um, and the other one was uh, Code of the Extraordinary Mind, Vishen Lakhiani, uh, was another one that really asks you to kind of stretch your thinking beyond uh, that current just perception that you have. Oh my, yeah, all of those books, it's a, it's about stepping into your power, about stretching yourself, about envisioning something bigger and greater. Only that's a scary place for so many people, you know, and because in stepping forward, it, it, it means you've got to face your biggest fears. It means you also have to face what some people might call failure. And, and so what is that? How do we help people through that? What does the, the, that whole concept of failure mean? Are, are you saying, oh, yeah, let's go in and all these books are just step into it? Well, I think, you know, it's I think that's a, always the like it's easier said than done moment. Right. Everyone, everyone says, oh, you know, it's sure that's easy for you to say. And, and everyone looks at someone who has a level of success that they would like to have. And, and they, and they think that that person is different, right? They think, oh, well, Jessica can do it because she's so pretty and she has brown hair and she wears glasses. And Paul can do it because he wears these cool blazers and the black t-shirt and he's always smiling, right? Um, and so there's this perception that, you know, that the people who are successful, that there's, that there's something, that there's something different um, about them and and it's really starting to use that person as a mirror of well actually right I have that too and I can do that too right Suc success mirrors success and I can achieve the same thing um, but failure is right this the uncertainty is a scary place right the unknown is a scary place and so there's this really beautiful opportunity to embrace that and and I remember um, I remember the beginning of, of my journey. I was never sure if it was like, if it was the fear of success that I was most afraid of, or if it was the fear of failure, um, you know, any other, you know, perfectionist, recovering perfectionists out Fair there. Enough. So I, I think, I think that it's a, a bit of both and, and what you have to learn about failure on this journey, especially if you're an entrepreneur is that everyone who has success has failed in some capacity and quite frankly they've done it many many times so it's just this beautiful opportunity to embrace failure because as long as you learn something from it i've been i've been failing forward for three years here's a really cool here. thing. here's the really cool thing about failing forward like if you're willing to fail if you're just willing to fail and you consistently fail forward, the only possible outcome is success. Right. <laughs> yeah. It, the only way that you end up failing is by stopping. Stopping or never starting. Well, stopping or never yeah. starting. Yeah. yeah. So that whole idea of failing forward fast, of, of stepping into it, of understanding that success, you can never have success unless you fail. And, and that embracing failure, it, what, it, if you could tap into like, what were some of your, was there one big failure? Is there multiple little failures? Like what, what's been your experience in, in this journey? And this is really key. This is what people want to know. Like, oh no, because we always talk about the glitz and the glamour. We talk about, oh man, I'm a millionaire. I'm a billionaire. Look what we have. Look at the fancy cars, the nice house and all this great stuff. Only, only the, the truth of the matter is what stops people and what throws them for a loop is the failure. And they don't know what to do at that, those moments. And they love to hear that. Have you really failed? Oh, <laughs> I still do. I still do. Right. Um, and, it, and it's and it's actually become one of my favorite things to do. Um, but, but I mean, truly, no, because truly, that's that's the that's the only that's the that's the only way that that you that's the only way that you get better, right? And it's and you because I mean, let, let's just let's just be real, right? Like no one, right? No one came out of the womb just like you know, superhuman, successful, making all the money, doing all the things, right? Like, right. so the um, so 
it, it's being, it's being in action, right? It's, it's, it's connecting to, this is something that really came through really strongly for me today is, is it's connecting to the feeling of fulfillment. Because if you're connected to the feeling of the fulfillment, then that is the, then that feeling becomes the fuel for the actions that you need to achieve the thing. Right. So, so you've got to have the feelings, you've got to have the drive to step into it. And actually, and one of the things that you talked about just a moment ago is, is the concept of embracing fear or uh, embracing failure. Embracing failure, embracing uncertainty, embracing the unknown. I think, you know, societally, it's been taught to fear those things, right? To fear uncertainty, to to fear the unknown and it's only from from the unknown and from these places of uncertainty that you can experience things that defy logic and that don't make sense and so that's that's where you're like well but if i if i fail like is it really failure right as long as you keep going it's not actually failure and so you are in part training yourself to be okay with failing, with messing up. I mean, when you have, especially as an entrepreneur, like are there days, Paul, you are there days that you still feel like you have no idea what you're doing? Yeah, of course. You know, and like, like there's the expression imposter syndrome and every speaker I know and everybody who's reached high levels of success in entrepreneurism every uh, has gone through those periods if you will it and not necessarily sustaining but periods of time where they feel like they've stepped so far beyond where they're comfortable that they feel like they're an imposter mm. and, and so they they've gone beyond and that that idea of stepping forward facing your fears and doing it anyway and fast failing forward fast well when you fail forward so fast you're beyond what you've imagined you could be and that's so much of what you talk about and where what we're talking about here is that idea of you've got to do that. And when you're feeling that imposter syndrome, then you're doing it right. Yeah. And I, you know, I per personally, the, the, the imposter syndrome is, a, is an interesting place because I just don't really, I just don't really subscribe to it. Um, having a background in Western medicine, uh, you know, like it, it, people talk about imposter syndrome as though, as though it's this real thing, as though it's like a disease that you can actually get, right? No. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. As a, and so for me, I've just, I've just, I remember hearing the language. I remember feeling a bit like an imposter, but the, but to string the word imposter together with a syndrome, it, it's, oh. it's not a syndrome, right? Like, the thing is, is, um, you know, is, is you, you are who you are. And, and what's happening is like, is, is yes, you're stretching, right? You're stretching, you're stepping into, you're stepping outside of your comfort zone. You're choosing to become a better version of yourself. And so sometimes that, that future vision of yourself, right? Who you're currently being has to catch up with that future vision of yourself. And if you can just stay in alignment with what I really started to uh, to bring in and, and and teach people recently is is that is the you that you are right now is already the person who embraces fear is already in the person who has the courage to take the action and it's okay to feel a little bit of fear and I can feel a little bit of fear and I can do it anyway like that that the person that you are right now is already that person. And so the more you can step into already being the person now who has the thing and the life that you choose to have and behave accordingly, right? The faster, the faster you then experience the outward reflection of what that is. Indeed. So the, the process of 
Yeah, definitely not a syndrome. Definitely not something that you're catching. Definitely not something that you're going to hold on to. It's a thought. It's simply a thought. But so the idea of constantly facing the fear, stepping into the possibility and embracing failure, any any particular techniques, once they know that they're in it and they're experiencing failure, to, to keep moving forward, the thought process to make that easier for them? Well, it's, it's, it's important to, it's important to reframe, like, because if you, if you feel like you're failing and you feel like you're in failure, then, then that feeling is the feeling that makes you want to stop, right? Whereas really, if you're in something that feels like failure, looks like failure, smells, smells like failure, right? Um, the way that I shift it is, is, is not so much that you're in failure, right? So you might be experiencing a challenge, right? So you might be experiencing an obstacle or a challenge and inviting you that this obstacle or challenge is in fact just a perceived challenge, right. right? It's a perceived challenge. I'm perceiving it as a challenge. I'm perceiving it as a failure. I'm perceiving it as an obstacle. But to me, I invite you to shift your perception of what that is to this challenge, perceived failure or obstacle as an opportunity. Because if you view it as an opportunity, what happens if you say like, okay, this, this obstacle, this perceived challenge, this perceived failure, okay, it's an obstacle. But now my new perception of obstacle is opportunity. So when you start to tell your mind obstacle equals opportunity, now your mind is constantly starting to search for like, okay, well, where's my opportunity? Where's my opportunity? I know there's an opportunity in here somewhere. And what's on the other side of the opportunity is a reward. So the goal, so the goal with success is never to eliminate challenge or obstacles. It's actually to get better at overcoming the small and medium sized obstacles right? When you get really good at those, then life throws you some bigger challenges and obstacles. And then you get good at coming, overcoming those. And the beauty of doing that is like, what's on the other, what's on the other side of a, of a, of a small obstacle is a small opportunity is a small reward, right? But if you're good at that, and then life starts giving you bigger obstacles, that means there's a bigger opportunity inside. And on the other side is a bigger reward. And so if you're so if you're looking more like three steps ahead of where's my opportunity, there's a reward in here somewhere. Um, Now, now you're not going to stay stuck in in this place of like stagnation, right? Because what happens is you get in you get in your head of like, I'm not I'm not doing enough. This isn't going right, blah, blah, blah. Right. But the problem is, is what you focus on expands. So if you're focusing on what's not working and what's going wrong, then you're expanding the problem of what's not working and what's going what's going wrong rather than saying, okay, being really, really solution oriented. Right. And focus and looking for okay, what's the solution? Where's my opportunity? What's the solution? Where's my opportunity? Because when you shift to focusing on where's my opportunity and what's the solution, then that's what comes in, right? Now that's what's expanding. Opportunities are expanding, solutions are expanding. And you're the key, you're in charge, you're in the driver's seat. Right. So often those failures, those things that come up the chit chat comes up and it shuts you down and and reframing it as you were expressing here is so great because the reframe is where we get our power and that reframe then creates that new opportunity and our brain goes to work for us yeah the and the and the game the game is is getting faster at it right so this was this was actually a challenge in like in one of my groups so e- each month um, in, in one of my group programs, there's always a challenge, right? There's always a challenge of this is something you're focusing on on the month. And one of the months this year, the challenge was how quickly can you shift from problem 
to solution. And it's really just about really how quickly can you be, be solution oriented? Like I right. have trained my brain to just automatically look for the solution. You know, I, I, I perceive something that's getting in the way. I perceive something that's not working and solution, solution, solution. And so when, when you train your brain to do that, not only does it do it for, you know, business stuff, it, it does it for relationship stuff, for household stuff, for, you know, for like everything. So you just, I mean, you're training your brain to be, to get to a solution as quickly as possible. So key, and, and over the years, as I've interviewed millionaires and billionaires, the one of the biggest difference between the average person and the millionaires and billionaires is that speed. That that speed of process of going from, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I've got a challenge to, oh, this is what I'm doing and then taking action on it. Yeah. And so, so great, so powerful. Uh, let, let's uh, Let's change gears a little bit. And I want you to imagine. So if you've got the best billboard in the world and it's got it's on the best highway in the world and we put this up there, metaphorically speaking, uh, what would you want it to say? What, what are some of the messages? We've got people all over the world listening here, entrepreneurs, business people in all types of industries. What are, what are some of the biggest and, and best things for you to broadcast on that billboard? What would you tell them? What would it say? Um, so I, I, the billboard, the billboard would say, I breathe, therefore I prosper. I breathe, therefore I prosper. Why? Why? Explain this. Yes. Well, <laughs> So I love that that your podcast is about doing doing things differently, and and one of one of my mottos when it comes to you know wealth creation and being a peaceful millionaire, being a peaceful billionaire is talking about money done differently, and and the the fastest thing that happens when 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 a lot of times people think about greater wealth or greater success and these bigger, these really big dollar amounts, right? You know, like there, there's a big gap between a million and a billion, right? It's a big gap. That's a big number. And, and the, the, the foremost detrimental words to anyone's success, especially when it comes to financial success, are the four words, that's not for me. Ooh. That's not for me, right? So what happens is, is majority of the time, majority of people, they think about making more money, earning more money, being a millionaire, being a multimillionaire, being a billionaire, and within a nanosecond, their brain says, that's not for me. Yes. So I breathe, therefore I prosper, is connecting to the truth of who you are as, as a being. And that it is, in fact, your divine birthright as a living being on this planet to be rich, to be wealthy, and to prosper. And so bringing in the concept of the truth, the truth of who you are, each and every person on this planet is someone who is worthy and deserving of wealth and riches. And I talk about being rich always in all ways, right? So that means mentally rich, spiritually rich, physically rich, financially rich, right? Rich with relationships, rich with love, rich with connections, rich with action, right? Being rich always in all ways. I breathe, therefore I prosper. The, the congruency of being rich in all ways and to breathe and be in the moment uh, is, so, is so powerful. Yeah. I get it now. I get it. What a so, great billboard. So like, so you, so you, you know, so you, so you, so it's, so, so it's tapping in, it's really, really tapping into, to the feeling, right? Because that's the thing. So if you, if you like, I, and I, and I teach this, right? So, so the, the secret, right? The secret recipe for creating 
literally creating, right? You, you are the creator, the, you're both the creator and the creation, the creation and the creator. Right. So anything that you choose to create in your life, whether that's more love, more success, more money, right? You are in the driver's seat and you're creating that. And you're creating that by, by way of number one, the quality of your thoughts. Number two, the quality of your feelings or emotions. Mm -hmm. Number three, the quality of your beliefs. Mm -hmm. And it's the sum of all three of those things, the quality of all three of those things that leads to the quality of your actions. Yes. And then all four of those things equal either your outcome, right? Or your result. Now, ideally you want your, you would like to have the desired outcome or the desired result, right? And so to reverse engineer that desired outcome or desired result, what are the quality of the thoughts? What do I need to be thinking in order to have that desired result, that desired outcome? How do I need to feel? What do I need to believe? And really turn up the volume on the quality of those three things. Because when you do that, you turn up the volume on the quality of your actions. And that's how that desired outcome and that desired result becomes absolutely inevitable. But the feelings, right, this tapping into the feeling, I breathe, therefore I prosper, tapping into the feeling of something, the feelings, people sometimes, it was people, I, listen, I used to avoid my emotions like the plague, okay? But your feelings, your feelings are jet fuel, right? So how you feel, how you feel about that desired outcome. So that's what I was talking about. Like plug into the feeling of the fulfillment of that desired outcome. Because when you're plugged in and you're tuned in to the feeling of the fulfillment, it's done. What it feels like in completion and you plug into that feeling, that is jet fuel. Like now your actions, now your actions are really plugged in to what it feels like to, to have that desired outcome. And all of a sudden, like someone attempts to like slow you down and hold your back. And you're like, no, 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 I, I gotta go. I, I, I like, shh, I'm over here. I'm super woman. I'm Superman, right? Shh, plugged in. You're plugged in to the feeling of the fulfillment. You're so many people think that business and high level business success is the antithesis of emotion. And, and what you're expressing is the complete opposite. And it's, it's all about that. Do it different, do it differently and figure out the, the new path in entrepreneurship. And it's understanding that your emotions are your jet fuel. Yes then they propel you to all the new heights and propel you through and the circle around to what we were talking about earlier, propel you through those periods of challenge, propel you through those periods of, of what other people might call failure to create the momentum that gets you to the other side. Yeah. And the thing about the failure, right, is it's, you know, because, because it, failure is just going to, it's just going to teach you how to do something better next time right? Like it's, it's, it's just simply an opportunity to learn and grow and, you know, be better and do better next time. And, and I think that, I think that it's important to, to say, because, you know, for, for me personally, and, and I, and I would gander to say the same is true for you, Paul, but, but the thing for me that I am most proud of, that is most valuable, like there is who I've become on this journey of creating this level of wealth and success for myself. It's the person that I had to become and for me, and that I continue to become. Yeah. That for me is, is what I'm most proud of, is, is this person that I get to be now. Yes. Um, and, and there's no amount of money or success that could supersede who I've become and there's no amount of failure that could take it away. That's key. That's so huge. And, and it's, and it's the, the person I've become for me and the person I've become for my family, for my loved ones, for my community. Um, th that is the best reward. And one of the key components is once you're playing at a certain level, 
You know, your your mind once expanded, never contracts. Your life once expanded, never contracts. That you're playing at this level and you will always play at that level because that's become your norm. Yes. And and so key with with everything that you're teaching. Um with 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 all of this and and what is it? So we build and and the focus is, you know, underlying building that richness. And that richness, richness across the board in joy and happiness and and prosperity, and it's it's the financial rich, richness as well. What do we do? And sometimes we need to invest before we have the wealth, as well as after. What do we do with the wealth? Because it's not about building the bank account; it's about what we do with it. What what is if you could share, and I know we've we've all been there and we've had different investments over the years, what's some of the best things that you've done with that wealth that you've accumulated or maybe prior to even accumulating it, some great investments that you've made? I mean, the, the really the most valuable investment that that I've ever made was in myself because the the first time that I invested in any sort of personal or professional development or a mentor the first time that I did that it was absolutely terrifying it was one of the most terrifying things I had, <laughs> I had ever done and you know and and oftentimes it feels it feels like a, a, a big investment and it and it is scary and but it's but it's an invest that investment in yourself is an investment in in who you're becoming right who you're becoming and that future self and and like you said oh once God. you expand it can't contract right so so you can't go back so the more you the more you invest in yourself in expanding who you are and what's possible for yourself what's possible for you what's possible for your business what's possible for you financially and once you have that no one can take that away so never and 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 so then so then right so then the when you're investing in yourself then then earning more and having more financial abundance right that that starts to become a lot of fun right that starts to become you know this game of okay how can i help more people help more people and contribute in a bigger way. And that was really that driving force for me was, was contribution. Like how can I contribute at the highest level in the best way for people through my work? And then how do I then take a large portion and contribute and give back to things that are, that are meaningful for you? And that's what I think is so important about because, because money, money has its own it, it has its own frequency and its own consciousness yeah. and and that's why people who are really successful move fast money likes to move fast money likes to have money likes to have direction meaning it likes to have a purpose it likes to have somewhere that it's going so so you have to kind of know that okay i'm building this money and building wealth like what am i going to do with it and and it's about more sure you can have a nicer house you can have a nice car that's all fine and well right you should treat yourself but but your but this highest version of you wants to contribute to the world in in a greater capacity and and every single person has multiple ways within you that are unique to you as to how you would like to contribute to the world. So it's being the change that you would like to see in the world and contributing to those things that are unique to you. Because if you've experienced something in your past or your childhood that was very hurtful, that was very painful, and now you step up your, your wealth creation, you step up your financial game, right? You step up that your own earning potential, you now have a greater capacity to give and you're going to choose to give to something different than I would choose to give to because right. we've all had this unique past experience of what we're passionate about changing in the world so that no one else has to experience this thing that I, I've experienced. So two things that you've expressed. One is, uh, of course, without a shadow of a doubt, invest in yourself. Invest, invest, invest in yourself. 
And it's where most people, their biggest investment in their world is to buy their house when they're homeowners. Uh, the, the, and sometimes uh, this is the second biggest investment is invested in their education, investing in themselves, investing in their growth. And that's uh, huge. And sometimes it's even greater than their house. Um, however, the magnitude of results that you get from it is, is profound over a lifetime. The second piece that you expressed was that whole idea of giving back and, and contributing. Is there a particular place that, that where, where's your passion in your heart? Where, where do you tend to give back? Um, one of, one of them is, um, is unsilenced voices, um, which is for, uh, women with, um, who've suffered domestic violence. Um, you know, I'm fortunately, I'm grateful that, that I have not personally experienced that, but, um, but it's a, it's a place of, of compassion in my heart. Cause I, I have many friends and, you know, people that I care about who have experienced that. Um, and another big one is, you know, any sort of like child or sex trafficking, uh, because there's, there's these, these, these things yes. should, just shouldn't be happening. It just shouldn't be happening in the world. Um, so anything to, um, and, and there's a, a couple of different like, uh, water, um, organizations that, that get water, um, you yes. know, to villages in other countries. Um, and I, and those are, that's another one that I, that I love. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm right there with you with all three. And so definitely, and paying attention to the trafficking and, and I focus in on the children and making sure that they've got the resources and the power to do, to build the life that they were meant to live versus what sometimes circumstance creates for them. And, uh, and to make sure that those circumstances are in a protective field uh, to keep them safe so that they can find their journey and find their way is uh, so powerful. Yeah. Great stuff. Awesome, awesome. We've got uh, people listening all over the place. Any, uh, any final words of wisdom that you want to share with our audience as we uh, start closing out our time together? The final closeout wisdom is where you are now is closer than you've ever been. Keep going. Beautiful. You don't keep you going don't, is right. You don't, you don't ever, you don't ever want to stop. To, don't, don't be the person who stops three feet shy from the gold that is waiting for you. So just, just remind yourself Remind yourself consistently that where you are now is closer than you've ever been and keep going, keep going. Cause that, that gold that's awaiting you, it's, it's right there, right there. We have been talking to Jessa Carter. We have been uh, talking about all the power on how to create just an amazing life. If I had to sum it up, that's what we've been talking about. How to create the richness in your life across the board. She is the peaceful billionaire. You absolutely want to grab hold of all this information, utilize it in your life, and reach out to Jessa to find out how to make this part of your world even more profoundly. How would they find you, Jessa? Please share. Yeah, you can go to Peaceful Millionaire Now, PeacefulMillionaireNow.com. And there's a whole lot of things. If you'd like to reach out to me to connect directly, you can reach out to connect to me directly there. You can grab a copy of The Peaceful Millionaire, Mind, Money, and Soul Wisdom there. And there's also um, an incredible list of free, uh, free wisdom and free bonuses and free gifts, one of which is a, um, a ticket for you and a plus one um, to my three-day peaceful millionaire intensive. So if you're really looking to start to create meaningful change in, in your financial destiny and your financial future and change what that feels like and what that looks like for you, um, that's definitely, definitely the place to be. Very cool. So peacefulmillionairenow.com. 
go check out Jessica Carter. She is just a gem in this field. You want to find out everything that she's doing. Thank you so much, Jessica, for being on. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thanks, Paul. Thank you so much for having me. So much fun. So much fun. Everyone else, understand we are on a journey together. We are on a journey to create magic in this world, to create a world that we all want to live in every single day. Continue to tap in, tap into, and listen to this episode all over again. And be sure to tune in to next week's episode as well as we continue the Mavericks Do It Different podcast and the journey that we're all on together. Share us on Facebook, share us on Instagram, reach out to me. I'd love to connect with you on a personal level as well. So let's make this all happen. It starts with you reaching out to us and we're here ongoing for you. Thank you so much. This is Paul Fink. This is the Maverick Universe and the Mavericks Do It Different podcast. Till next time, everyone. Thanks for being here today. As our gift to you, be sure to go to themaverickuniverse.com where you can download your free copy of the Maverick Manifesto. Until next time, dare to be different. Dare to be a maverick.